Thanks very much, Rich. It's uh, always a privilege when I can be joined on stage with uh, special guests. And in this instance, we've got three really superb panelists. Uh, let me introduce first Lou Gallagher. Uh, Lou is responsible for technology at Health East. Health East is a large healthcare organization in Minneapolis, St. Paul. One of the key things that Lou has been tasked with is actually driving their HR record, uh, health record management transformation, five-year, $135 million project. And when you think about the environment at a, at a, at a hospital, just the check-in process alone in terms of how many people are required in that process is substantial. And in a typical hospital, a hospital bed is actually used less than 70% of the time. So when you think about collaboration, di digital transformation, huge opportunity for improvement. Our next guest I'm going to introduce today is Nikki Papazagakis. Nikki is actually with Harris County, the third largest county in the, in, in the U.S. Uh, they host uh, several big events each year. Uh, this year they hosted the big game uh, that featured uh, uh, a surprising comeback if you're a fan of the team from the Northeast. They, they host the Houston Rodeo, which is actually even bigger than the big game. And she's going to talk about bringing together that organization because it's not just the people of Harris County that she has to pull together. There's all sorts of outside agencies of first responders that she's got to bring together to collaborate and stay connected uh, for the safety uh, and sanctity of the folks in, in her area. And then finally, I'm joined on stage by Byron ba Battles. Byron is with uh, Technology Trends Group. He's a longtime hired gun for customers of all shapes and sizes. He's been particularly uh, integrated in what's taking place in the civic area, the, the, the digital transformation of cities, how, how governments can better care for their, their constituent base. And so he, please welcome Byron as well. To our panelists, thank you for joining us. So I'm going to start with just a few easy questions to open up. Uh, you know, Lou, for you, how has this move to digital transformation reshaping what's taking place at Health East? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question, Wes. I think it's really twofold. What we've been able to do in our DevOps team is be able to um, deploy applications much faster, which used to take us months and even years. We can now do sometimes in weeks. Um, so our speed to market is uh, just much quicker than it ever was before. And then our customization. In hospitals, it's very tough to get customized functionality back to our internal customers as well as our external customers. And we've been able to do that for physicians, uh, patients, uh, family of patients. So those great. two things. Great. Byron, from, from, a, uh, from a government perspective or what your clients are seeing, uh, you know, how is digital transformation reshaping th those organizations? Well, the, uh, the primary client that we're working with is a major uh, municipality on the East Coast, and uh, it's going from decades of Centrex, which is basically dial tone, to a, a unified communication solution from Mitel that's going to provide uh, a variety of uh, modes of communication and uh, the potential for much more convenient, much more effective, much more efficient types of communications amongst the city agencies. Great. And, and Nikki, I know you're in a little different spot because you've got people that are toting guns and, and hauling hoses and, and uh, in a really unique environment. So as you try to intersect the different devices they carry, these different uh, uh, people in different organizations, how is that changing the face of collaboration? Well, public safety traditionally uses radio for communications. And so um, being able to provide devices with mobile apps, we're now able to uh, empower them with other mechanisms to share video streams or pictures. Uh, Super Bowl 51 was the first large scale event that we actually operationally incorporated the use of mobile apps and other technologies. There were arrests that were made, children and missing people that were found, medical calls that were faster and expedited. Um, so it really is transforming the way that public safety is able to operate and communicate and collaborate at large scale events and ultimately in incident response as well. Excellent. Byron, have you seen the same thing from your perspective? Uh, to a different um degree but but very similar the uh, the technology is going to be there and it's it can provide all sorts of wonderful and, and great things but uh, Nikki mentioned backstage that it takes a, a, an amount of muscle memory for the people to actually be able to use that and the users really don't care what the technology is they want it to be simple reliable helps them do their job so it takes a tremendous amount of of training and communication and testing to make sure that when it's ready to go 
it, it works. Sure, so. sure. And you know, um, it's gotta be really challenging, all the different devices and sensors, and I know part of your big transformation at, at Health East Lou was moving to an Epic platform to really you know, automate, I think you had seven, eight different HRM platforms and really automating one across you know, 14 different locations. How, you know, how challenging is it to try to take devices and software applications and, and your communications platform and try to bring that, that together to drive collaboration? What, what is that process like? Yeah, so that's been extremely challenging. In healthcare, you not only have your EHR, which is really your primary application, but you have hundreds, literally hundreds of uh, separate applications. And they all try to communicate independently of each other to the EHR. So that's been a really big challenge. What we've done is we've tried to centralize that. So all of our physicians use the same communication channels, all of our nurses use the same communication channels, and it comes back to a central thought process, uh, which MITEL is a core piece of now. Good. And, and Nikki, I, I gotta think you've gone through the same thing. I mean, I, I can't imagine all the constituents you have in Harris County, they've got lots of devices and platforms and how you knit that together for the Super Bowl or for the Houston Rodeo, it's gotta be a real challenge. Uh, it is, and you know, you're never gonna get a whole bunch of government agencies at federal, state, local, county, you know, across various disciplines to all choose the same platforms, but when it comes to uh, large-scale operations, even daily operations and incident response, they need access to that information, so it doesn't matter if you own the sensor or they own the video system that captured whatever intelligence or information needs to be shared, that needs to get to the right people when and where and how they need to be able to access it. Uh, and especially as we start to evolve and move more towards wearables and other things where now an incident commander can actually monitor the vital signs of their responders to say, you know what, that firefighter shouldn't be going into that building right now because that could create a worse situation for all of the responders involved in that incident. So I think we're just gonna con continue to see more complexity, particularly as we get into more IoT, more wearables, things like that. And can you talk a little bit about the cultural transition you went through? Because I gotta think you've got rough and tough firefighters and policemen and so forth that think, hey, I, I don't need, to, need this. And so I talk a little bit about the, the cultural transition you went through as you changed out the technology. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's really exciting. Uh, in the beginning, you know, we showed up with our new tools and technologies and thought they would all, you know, embrace it and be very excited. And they kind of looked at us like, why do I need that? I have my radio. And uh, so, you know, we, we started with a ground up approach of where are the problems, where are the pain points, but you can't ask them that. You have to know what they do and how they do it to get to the right answer to find where are those challenges. And once you find them and then you bring tools that actually solve those problems when they see the arrest, when they see the tears in the parents' eyes of the runaway child that they found using your app, sending the picture out at an event with 175,000 people. It moves them and they go, wow, this is cool and I like this. Where's my app? <laughs> Can I use it for the next event? And so they're, you know, by the nature of what they do as a profession are inherently resistant to change, but I think that collectively, as we're bringing forth tools and technologies, if we can understand what they're doing, where their pain points are, and bring solutions that actually solve those problems, when they see the successes from it, they very, very quickly become uh, adopters of it, and, and it does drive that cultural change in how they look at uh, technology and communications. Byron, I'd be interested in your, your perspective, the, the cultural transition that, that you see. Uh, it's been pretty uh, um, marked. Uh, for years, the city, uh, city's municipal telephone exchange and the uh, office of IT worked separately, and uh, they really didn't have much to do with each other. Now, as uh, the local operating telephone company is being eased out and we're moving into an IP type of, of uh, environment, those two organizations are having to learn how to work together, and, and they're doing well, but there's a division of responsibilities for what's behind the wall, which is network and uh, infrastructure, as, and in front of the wall, which is provisioning and operations. And um, basically, that's, that's where we're needing to, to understand. And then when you get to the uh, actual end users, um, there's a whole nother culture of what can we do with this this solution now, as opposed to just pick up and make phone calls. There are uh, a whole scad of, of uh, communication uh, capabilities that, that need to be uh, conveyed to the users. 
Yeah, excellent. And I've got to think, Lou, your situation is pretty unique. If you've had all these different platforms and devices and different hospitals that you've and, and, and care sites you've had to pull together, how did you work through the, the, the cultural transition in your, in your instance at HealthEast? Yeah, so ours is a lot like Nikki. Um, we've got these people called physicians that know everything about everything, so they try to tell us how to do things. And they want a bigger, better pager in their environment. Uh, um, we still use pagers in, in the healthcare industry. And it's been really interesting, I've uh, been there four years, to try to get the physicians and the caregivers to trust in IS and see us as a, an engineering and architecture team to be able to deliver new applications for them. They always wanted to go out and buy their own specific tool because they thought that tool was the best thing. So the cultural shift has been from them almost not wanting to speak with us to just last Friday I had our uh, CMIO, our lead physician, send me an article saying how come we're not doing this and I was lucky enough to say we already are. So we've got our customers coming to us now. So as you think about this transition, this move to, to you know, increase collaboration, the move to digital transformation, is it about saving costs, reducing expenses, or is it about a better customer experience? Well, yeah, for, for healthcare, it really is about the patients. I mean, that's what we talk about, and it really is how do we give a more um, service-oriented, from a technology perspective, experience for patients. It's, it's a very hard industry to, to uh, go through as a, as a customer, let's say. And what we're trying to do is just make that easier. So what our big goal is, is to do real-time communications, like Rich was talking about. Um, we've got a technology that we're deploying where if you're a patient with congestive heart failure and you step on a scale, um, that can communicate back with us real-time, and then we can communicate back with a physician or a contact center to act upon that data. Excellent. Byron, what's, what's your perspective? Uh, is this about saving costs? Is it about a better customer experience, or is it, or is it something else? Well, with uh, local government, it's always about at least containing costs, if not reducing them. But uh, with this particular uh, municipality, it's also uh, allowing the constituents and the citizens better access to the city services, and specifically um, not keeping somebody that wants to pay their taxes on hold for 45 minutes. <laughs> so being able to let them pay their taxes. Excellent. Nikki, I'm going to give you the last word of the day. T uh, tell us, is, you know, when you look at this transition, what does it mean to, you, to, to your constituent base? Is it, is it a cost savings? Is it a better customer experience? What's really driving it for Harris County and, and the people you serve? In public safety in general, it always comes down to protecting lives, saving lives, protecting property, and keeping the first responders safe who are responsible for protecting those communities. And so costs are always a factor in government, and you know it's something that is important, but it's not the driving factor. It's keeping the first responders and the citizens safe, uh, and being able to provide tools that can drive efficiencies, have advantages around cost savings because you get e efficiencies of not having to drive somewhere to get certain information. You can push information out to field users. So maybe you can start to be able to reduce staff uh, you know, and, and do more with less, but uh, in, in our world, it's really about the public safety outcomes and what are the tools and technologies that we can provide that enable better, safer communities. Uh, Excellent. Well, I'd like to thank our guests today for spending some time with us, sharing their story. Uh, so thank you very much. We appreciate Welcome. your time. Thank you. Thank you. Rich.